Hi, I'm Jeff Sharon from UCF Sports Night. You can now watch UCF TV 24 hours a day on Bright House Digital Channel 1. Coming up next on UCF Sports Night, a rivalry renewed. We've got highlights of UCF and USF on the hardwood. Without them, sports don't happen. We've got a look at the Knights equipment staff. And we take a look back at the men's soccer team's 2008 season. All that and more now on UCF Sports Night. UCF Sports Night is brought to you by UCF TV. Today's show is also presented in part by Budweiser, the perfect balance of flavor and refreshment. Open up a world of taste. By the energy-saving conservation programs of Tico People's Gas. And by Syntex Homes, proud to support UCF Athletics. Hello and welcome to UCF Sports Night. I'm Jeff Sharon. Thanks for stopping by. We've got a lot for you in this show, including all of our features, as we mentioned before. But first, let's take a look back at the week that was in UCF sports with both basketball teams continuing their tough out-of-conference schedules. And we start with the women's team heading up north to take on an SEC opponent. Wednesday night, the Knights were in Tuscaloosa, Alabama to face the Crimson Tide. UCF hung tight in the first half thanks to Emma Cannon. Here she fights for two to keep the Knights in it. UCF continued to give the Tide fits, led by Aisha Patrick. She picked up 10 points and nine boards on the night. Also, Jaleesa Caldwell showed some of her range. She had six points, and Chelsea Wiley chipped in with a team high 11. UCF led by one point at the break. Second half, Marche White gets into the act. She hits a three here to keep UCF in it, but in the end, the Tide would put this one away on their home floor. Final score, 67-53. Alabama gets the win. The Knights did hold Bama to just 33% from the field. After that, UCF took another road trip down to Fort Myers to face the Eagles of Florida Gulf Coast, but the result did not come out to UCF's liking. The Eagles pick up the win despite another nice outing by Emma Cannon, who put up another double-double, 14 points and 13 rebounds for Emma on the night. Back at home, the men's team was finally back at UCF Arena for the first time since the season opener, and for a big one, too, taking on I-4 rival South Florida in Orlando for the first time since 2002. Great atmosphere at the UCF Arena and a near record crowd coming out. UCF came out in gold jerseys for the first time this season, a big surprise before the game got started. And the Knights got off to a great start with Kenrick Zondervan on the break. He gets the dunk here, Knights up early. USF would keep pace and they would take a rather sizable lead, but the Knights got a big lift right before the half as Drew Sparrow sinks this three right before the buzzer. The Knights within two points at the break. Second half, UCF gets it going. Tony Davis came up big against the Bulls. Here's two of his career high, 17 points on the evening. And then Jermaine Taylor took over late. He finished with 30 points on 12 of 20 from the field. And UCF pulled away in the final moments with some clutch free throw shooting. UCF knocked off USF for the first time in 14 years, 71 to 63. The Knights advanced to four and three with the big win. Afterwards, Jermaine Taylor gave credit to the student fans who came out. It was, oh, it was amazing. I mean, it was hard to hear out there thanks to them. I mean, I expected it to be a big crowd just because of USF and everything, but this is, this is way more than I expected. I didn't expect it to be as many students as it was that early. They were there like an hour before the game started. So I think we set off the engine tonight and they were a big part of this game. You know, that it was the same situation as Ole Miss, you know, and, and uh, we weren't going to let that happen again. And, um, you know, we just, we just fought hard. You know, came out and, you know, Drew's bucket at the end of the half was big. And of course, for all the latest news and scores from all UCF sports, all you have to do is log on to UCFathletics.com. Stick around, coming up next here on UCF Sports Night, we get a behind the scenes look at the equipment staff here at UCF Athletics. That and plenty much more when UCF Sports Night returns. Fans come to UCF Arena Friday, December 12th, as the men's basketball team takes on Florida Tech at 7 p.m. Season tickets are still available starting at just $99. To order, call the ticket office at 407-UCF-1000 or visit UCFAthletics.com.
Welcome back to UCF Sports Night. You know, every sport here at UCF has its own very specific demands in terms of equipment. And here at UCF, they have a veritable army of people in charge of keeping track of and taking care of that equipment. The UCF equipment staff have probably the busiest job in all of college sports. And we get a behind the scenes look at their task in our Sports Night Spotlight. There are bad days and good days, but the reason that I really love being an equipment manager is I have to work with the athletes. I get to see them grow from being a freshman coming in here nervous about competing, nervous about practice, nervous about the coach, nervous about everything. Whatever job, whatever sport I'm working with, I get to see them succeed. The, the equipment staff is the, the greatest. I mean, John Whitford is our equipment manager, our personal team equipment manager, and he just does a phenomenal job. Well, I was my equipment staff in high school, you know. Um, you kind of provide your own equipment. Uh, we're here, you show up on the first or second day and it's like Christmas. And you look in your locker and it's unbelievable the amount of things you have in there. I've always loved sports. Um, I've always loved being around sports. Um, I wanted to be involved in some capacity. Um, I like interacting with the players, um, being on the team, being on the sideline, being involved. Um, and that's really what I love about doing this. Oh, it's great. I mean, I came in the same year as Drew Spirog, Kendrick Donovan, and Jermaine Taylor. So I got to see Jermaine and Kenny their freshman year when they didn't play. But Jermaine has really grown into an All-American player, and it's been amazing to watch that transformation uh, up close and personal. The most rewarding thing that I think um, is just having a hands-on a relationship with the coaches and with the players and being in, able to interact with them daily. <laughs> Typical day for me depends if there's a game or not a game. Uh, basically if there's not a game I'm here at 7 a.m. in the morning I'm getting stuff ready from the game before the practices before or maybe they traveled and they came back. Um, well I like to think that I have three typical days um, a practice day, a game day at home and then a road day. And the practice involves maybe helping out directly in drills. I mean, physically with the players, whether it's on a football pass with the post players, or throwing passes, or taking charges even, or making the guys take charges, uh, everything and anything. Um, and then there's also cleanup after. There's laundry after practice that we do. And then that's one day. I have great, I have great student managers. So when my student managers go on the road with the team and they're actually on television, I take a lot of pride in my student managers because my student managers are the ones that are actually cleaning the garments. They're actually going to the laundromat. They're actually walking miles and miles and miles to the laundromat or getting a taxi and going driving 20 miles just to make sure the uniforms are clean for the game. John Woodford really rubbed off on us student managers. We, uh, because when it's, when it's us on the road, he does such a great job at home that it makes us want to do the same job on the road. Um, there's a great deal of pride in being able to look at the other team and look at your team and, and realize that, that your guys look better than their guys. So, But yeah, it really you really got to take a lot of pride because you never know who's watching out there and what impression you're going to make on people like, wow, that team really looks good. And even if it doesn't come back to me, it reflects on the school and that's what's important. The amount of work that the equipment staff does here at UCF is phenomenal, and nobody knows that better than their boss, the man sitting next to me, Robert Jones, the Director of Athletic Sports Equipment here at UCF. Robert, thank you so much for taking some time for us. My pleasure. Thank you for having me. You started here at UCF uh, in 2002. You've been working in this business for better part of a quarter of a century now. Uh, what sort of staff did you start out with here uh, six years ago? At uh, UCF, I started out with one part-time assistant, and that part-time assistant left me in my first two weeks of the job, so it was just me. And then we hired another part-time assistant, and from that point on, I've added to her three full-time assistants and one intern. Wow. So things have really progressed so much, not just in terms of the scale of the task that you have every week, in particular not just with football, which I know you're in charge of, but all the other sports. Uh, how much more difficult or easy is it now as opposed to just six years ago when you first started here? Well, six years ago when I started here, we were just starting our Adidas contract. And at the time, I was replacing someone who only handled football. My task was to engulf every sport here and overtake it and oversee it. 
And so with that, I had to hire more people. So trying to do this by myself and one part-time assistant was pretty difficult. As time went by and we ended up hiring the people we needed, it has pretty much simplified my task at need. Aside from football, which sport uh, has the highest demands in terms of equipment? Believe it or not, it's, it's going to be baseball. Really? Uh, they have a lot of equipment uh, that they deal with. They have a lot of athletes. Uh, probably the outside of football, you have baseball with you know 38 to 40 athletes, and then rowing, who has 100 some athletes. But rowing doesn't require as much time as baseball. What's the most rewarding part of the job? Success, winning. Being around the football program, we've seen that a lot recently. Exactly, and plus just being around an athletic uh, facility, being on a college campus, you know, seeing the atmosphere and the students here, you know, it just keeps you rejuvenated and ready to go. What makes UCF different from other schools in terms of how we handle our equipment structure? Well, we are spread out here a little bit. Most uh, equipment places will have one centralized location with football off to the size of satellite equipment room. We have five satellite equipment rooms. We don't have one major equipment room, so we have to have people to manage those. So we're a little different than most schools. And more staff and everything. Is there anything new coming down the line that maybe we can look forward to on the equipment side of things as the end of this year? Uh, at the end of this year, I can't think of anything at this time. You know, but each year things always change with staff. It also changes with the Adidas and what they require for us to handle. All right, Robert Jones from UCF Equipment. Thank you so much for joining us here on UCF Sports Night. We appreciate it. Thank you. Stick around. Coming up next here on UCF Sports Night, we've got plenty more for you, including our top plays of the week. We're back after this. Fans come to UCF Arena Thursday, December 18th, as the women's basketball team takes on the Miami Hurricanes at 7 p.m. Season tickets are still available starting at just $39. To order, call the ticket office at 407-UCF-1000 or visit UCFAthletics.com. Welcome back to UCF Sports Night. We continue our fall season reviews with men's soccer. And joining me now is head coach Brian Cunningham. Coach, good to see you. Good to see you, too. Tell me about uh, how this season went. How would you grade the team in 2008? Well, I think we, um, we started out you know, a little bit in a, in a slump there on the road playing some big-time teams. And with a young team, we kind of knew that might happen. So, uh, you know, all in all, we rebounded, made a great run uh, in a non-conference schedule. In our conference schedule, wind up finishing in third. So if I had to grade it on a whole from, from the staff down to the players, uh, I would put us around a B, B plus. Finished in third place. We're in contention uh, for the conference regular season title with about two weeks ago. Won a game in the conference tournament. Uh, but the best part about all this is you only lose three seniors this year. So how excited are you for next year's team coming back? We talked about that actually um, when we lost in the semis is what, what a tremendous foundation those three seniors laid for our young players and uh, how, how bright the future is for, for the guys coming back. We, we'll bring everybody back but those three guys and, uh, and we're looking forward to some good times uh, here in the near future. Those young players that have been on the team, they made a lot of strides, perhaps none of them more so than Sean Johnson in goal, who was fantastic this year. Tell me about how uh, his development came along this season. Well, for all, for all the young players and for Sean, the one thing that's irreplaceable is uh, actually playing in games and getting the game experience. And for Sean, he was able to do that as a freshman, which was great for us as a team. And then this year, he really took some tremendous strides uh, in practice and his game preparation and then obviously that really paid off for him you know wind up finishing in the top 10 in the nation in saves and led the conference in saves and uh, and did some really good things in terms of uh, leadership that he provided for our younger players and uh, we're looking forward to him uh, pushing into a more of a leadership role here in the near future as well what do you guys do in the spring 
The spring is going to be pretty hefty for the new players. There's something they're going to have to get used to is we're in a year-round conditioning and strength program that'll start about a week after they return from their winter break. Uh, we'll also do individual training, which is a good time for us to focus on the individual technique of every different position and the uh, different attributes of every single player. Uh, after that, we'll move into some team training. We'll play five matches against some professional teams and some local college teams to prepare us then for, again, a competitive fall there in 2009. All right, and then tell me once again, as you look forward to 2009, uh, who are some of the players that will uh, excite you the most about them coming back? Well, you start with Sean Johnson in goal, which is going to be great. You know, looking forward to working with him again in the spring and uh, really increasing some things that, uh, you know, will help us in the fall. Kevon George was the only freshman uh, to make the first team All-Conference USA uh, team, and uh, he'll return next year, so we're looking forward to him as well, you know, improving here in the spring. Your own backer, another um, uh, sophomore who transferred in, we're looking, to we're looking forward to working with him in the spring and getting some individual techniques and things he needs to improve upon. And Camilo Rendon, a, a player that came to us late, and uh, looking forward to working with him and uh, him providing some leadership in the fall as well. All right, so the plan seems to be right on track for you, Coach. Congratulations on a successful season season and uh, we'll catch up with you in the spring as the uh, spring season cranks up. Absolutely. Looking forward to it. All right. Hey, Coach Brian Cunningham, thank you so much for joining thank us. Thank you. Stick around here on UCF Sports Night. We've got plenty more for you coming on the way, including our top three plays of the week. Don't go away. UCF Sports Night is back in a moment. Fans join the men's basketball team Monday night, December 22nd for Hispanic Heritage Night at UCF Arena as they take on Valparaiso. Tickets are available at the UCF Arena box office by calling 407-UCF-1000 or by visiting ucfathletics.com. Welcome back to UCF Sports Night. We'll get to our plays of the week in a moment. But first, let's catch you up on some news and notes from this past week in UCF Sports. The UCF cheerleading and dance teams are heading back to nationals. The Knights cheerleaders were once again invited to participate in the 2009 College Cheerleading and Dance National Championships, which will be held at Disney's Wide World of Sports January 16th through the 18th. The Knights come in ranked second overall and have an automatic buy into the finals. UCF has two national championships under its belt in 2003 and 2007, and they finished in third last year. Also, Amy Wynn and Mike Pucci have been selected as one of just 29 pairs to participate in the co-ed partner stunt competition, and Night Moves, UCF's dance team, has also been invited to the College Dance National Championships. They're ranked 14th nationally and will participate in the semifinals. And in soccer news, head coach Amanda Cromwell is taking home some extra hardware. She's an assistant coach for the USA Under-20 national team, and they knocked off North Korea to win the Under-20 Women's World Cup on Sunday. It's the second World Cup for the US Under-20 team. They also won it in 2002. Closer to home, congrats to Eleni Reyes of the women's soccer team. The freshman goalkeeper was named to the Division I All-America second team. She's the first Knight to receive National All-America honors since 1995. Reyes tallied six shutouts and 21 starts in 2008 and a 1.26 goals against average. Also, Daniela Dos Santos, Becca Thomas, and Nikki Moore were named to the All-Southeast Region teams. Time for a special All-Soccer edition of our Sports Night Plays of the Week. The top plays from soccer this year. Play number three, women's soccer against Rice. Down a goal in the final minute of play, and Daniela Dos Santos comes up big in the clutch once again. The equalizer in the final minute to send this thing to overtime. She finished with eight goals on the year and some awesome celebrations, but none more dramatic than that. Play number two, men's soccer against UNF and senior Ryan Rochendel was awesome all season, but never more spectacular than this laser right here from 31 yards out and into the back of the cage. One of his two goals in that game and three on the season, helping UCF to a big win. 
But play number one belongs to the ladies and Yvonne George early in the season at Florida, late in a scoreless game. Watch off the turnover as she catches a break and beats the Gator goalkeeper to get the goal. It was the only goal of the game and that gave the Knights the big victory over Florida, sending them well on their way to another spectacular season. Now here's a look at some other great plays from soccer this year. And those are your Sports Night Plays of the Week. It's finals week on campus, so not a lot of action in the week ahead. That is until Friday night. That's when the men's basketball team welcomes the Panthers of Florida Tech to UCF Arena. Tip-off is set for 7 p.m. You can catch the radio broadcast with Mark Daniels and Mike O'Donnell on AM 740 WQTM. Or if you can't make it to the arena, you can watch online at UCFAthletics.com via UCF All Access. Starting this week, you can see UCF Sports Night on a new channel. We're on Bright House Sports Network Tuesdays at 4.30 p.m. and Thursdays at 4 p.m. That's in addition to our regular time of Tuesday at 5 on Sun Sports and all week on UCF TV and online at UCFAthletics.com. Night Vision, the official monthly publication of UCF Athletics, is available now. This month's edition includes feature stories on Jermaine Taylor of the men's basketball team and the remarkable story of UCF senior football player John L. Neal. Copies are available at several locations on campus or via subscription by calling 888-877-4373, extension 121. And mark your calendars. UCF Sports Today with head basketball coach Kirk Spiroff debuts Tuesday, January 6th. Join the coach and the voice of the Knights, Mark Daniels, as they look back at the week in UCF men's basketball. You can catch the show on Sun Sports, Bright House Sports Network, and UCF TV, again starting Tuesday, January 6th. And for all the latest on all UCF sports, visit UCFAthletics.com, your home for UCF sports, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And as always, if you want to catch this episode one more time or any of our archived episodes of UCF Sports Night, you can anytime you want. All you have to do is log on to www.ucf.tv and click on UCF Sports Night. That is all for us for this week. For all of us here at UCF Athletics and UCF TV, I'm Jeff Sharon saying thank you so much for watching and go Knights! Hey, this is LT from 1011 WJRR. You're listening to the best sounds of area music. UCF Athletics, Access Magazine, and WJRR are proud to support local artists. You can find more great artists by going online at www.wjrr.com and also accessmag.com. And by listening to Native Noise each and every Sunday at 11 o'clock. UCF Sports Night has been brought to you by UCF TV. Today's show is also presented in part by... Bright House Networks, see how bright life can be. By Holler Classic, the official automotive group of the UCF Knights. And by Coca-Cola, welcome to the Coke side of life.